Oh, there you are, you made it. Did you get your palette set up? Are you ready to paint a monochromatic flower? I hope so. In the last video, now if you didn't watch that one, we set up our palette in the uh, value scale and I showed you how I set up all my grays so I'm ready to paint something um, in my monochromatic value scales that I've been doing this week. And I know you guys, I appreciate all the interest in that. So I'm gonna demonstrate a rose and if you watch it through and then you wanna give it a try, go for it. And then we are going to film a composition, a lesson probably in one or two parts so that you're able to uh, paint that with me. All right, so let's go down to our palette. So as you can see, I still have the palette out that we were just working with as I was showing you how I set it up. Remember we have all the values of from black to white, uh, the medium white, burnt sienna, and cerulean blue because those will make a nice warm gray. Alrighty. So I'm just going to demonstrate on this real small um, canvas and I've kind of zoomed the camera in. I do have my value scale out, so it's a really good idea for you to have that beside you, a value scale, um, in case you get lost in trying to figure out, you know, exactly what is going on if something goes awry, okay? I am going to, let's see, if, let me prop this up. If I need to pop the glare, I can use a tube of paint there maybe to do that. And of course, I'm gonna have paper towels so that I'm able to pinch wipe. And I'm gonna start with a three quarter inch. I always like to start with the largest brush as possible. And I'm gonna come in, now my, I'm gonna say that um, this is my background, so it's whatever white is on this canvas. And I'm gonna come in with the lightest gray that I have, which is that value eight. Alrighty, and I'm gonna lighten it a little bit with some uh, titanium white, so I'm moving up my value scale. Does This doesn't have to be perfect, I just don't want a lot of contrast between my canvas, which is about a value 10, and my first color, so I don't wanna come in with black, okay? I'd create a lot of problems having those um, that many steps between. So if my canvas is going to be a value 10, I don't wanna really drop down more than to a value eight, with my first color, alrighty? Doesn't mean it can't be done, but it does create, doesn't make it a little easier. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to establish where my rose, just some of my, just a little bit of an oval. I'm gonna establish the circles of my rose, which we have talked about. And if you've been painting um, with some of my other friends on YouTube or in the classroom, you know, we establish our um, three circles of the rose. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of wet color to work with. Alrighty, these are pure acrylic. I have not uh, globalized them. I'm gonna come into the warm gray. Now that warm gray is cerulean, plus a little bit of, a little bit D, a little bit of the burnt sienna. So I'm gonna just make myself a nice warm, I got a lot of burnt sienna in my brush when I grab that, be real careful. I'm using a really large brush. And I'm also going to lighten it just a little bit. Alrighty, and I just reached over and grabbed the value eight and lightened it, I'm gonna come in and say, okay, this is the, and this is that warm gray, okay? I realize I'm doing a very warm color. Remember, it's easier to cool a warm than it is to warm a cool. So I'm gonna start my center on this one, um, just establishing that center, the throat of the rose with that warm gray. And then I'm gonna establish the shadow. So I'm establishing the bowl. Okay, so you have three parts to your rose, the throat, the bowl, and then the reaching petals. And you don't have to put this all the way around that um, rose. You don't have to go all the way up like a smile line. All right, we just wanna make sure we have some color in there. I'm gonna come back in and uh, just reach over for a little bit of a light gray color. All right, and you can see all my values run right here together. And I'm just going to establish just a little bit of color down below and restate anytime you need to restate. If you lose uh, that shadow, I think I'm gonna come around all the way up to the side. All right, my paint's not super duper thick right now. I'm just kind of giving myself something to work in. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now I have this crazy, well-loved, very well loved uh, three quarter inch, okay? And um, I'm gonna use, I like to use it as much as I can to a point. And um, then at some point, let me wipe off this uh, palette. At some point though, it becomes a little too big for this size of rose, but I always like to give myself the challenge of staying with as large of a brush as I possibly can, all righty? I'm gonna come in with some warm, uh, medium, uh, medium white, and I'm gonna add that to that light gray. And I'm just getting myself a warm 
light color over to the side, and I'm going to strike that in. Just some modeling of color. All right, just some modeling of color. Okay, you see that? It's hard to see on camera. We're painting in black and white. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move that color around down below the flower as well. Now I'm going to drop down to a number 10 and I'm going to go ahead and lighten that color even some more. Alrighty, and just kind of strike a little bit of color variation onto my bowl. Alrighty, if you're not seeing it, then you, in order to see light, you have to have dark. So we may have to drop the value a little bit more on, um, on the bowl of our the bowl of our rose, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and just move some of that light color out and around, all right? I'm gonna drop down to white, lighten it a little more, and pick up some of that warm white, because I feel like I need to warm that front some more. And I'm just going to kind of push some color, deposit it, and push it into place, all right? Okay, that's starting to look like a rose. Starting to get it there. I'm gonna pull just a little bit of this young petals, the impression of young petals out and around. Now it's very, very difficult when you're painting to um, work on just one flower at a time, especially uh, in a composition, you're able to let this tack up and go over and work on another one and another one as you're working. So if you're um, you know, working on one and you're just doing a practice board, I'm gonna restate my shadows, and you're working on a practice board, I recommend that you practice on you know, three or four flowers at a time, okay? Three or four flowers at a time. Now, down in the throat, I'm gonna have the coolest, darkest color. So I'm able to now go ahead and I can just get that just a little more depth. And the more values you cover in your rows, meaning that if your range runs from the one all the way up to the 10, as opposed to painting only up here, you're gonna have a lot more depth, especially in a composition, alrighty? So the more values you can cover and incorporate into your composition, into your flower, the more depth it's gonna have, alrighty? And I do use my fingers quite a bit. Quite a bit, I know. I'm gonna work on these reaching petals just a little bit. Um, I may have to lighten that. Now I did have some of that uh, darker gray in my brush, so I'm gonna warm up and work on getting just a little lighter. Not too light. You gotta remember though, the contrast that you have out to this outer edge, if you have a lot of contrast, then those petals are really gonna set off of that white, same thing, contrast, okay? So you gotta be aware of your contrast a lot when you're working in um, a monochromatic scale. That's what I've discovered, okay? I feel like I've probably dropped that down just a little bit too much. Same thing applies when you're painting um, that in a black and white or in a monochromatic, uh, same thing applies you know, that we do with the green. We go in and negative paint. So I can come in and just go ahead and negative paint into my flower, okay, set it off, alrighty, and that might end up being my leaves, alrighty. Uh, I'm gonna come in and just kind of restate just a little of the, the reaching petals. There we go, let's maybe soften that out a little. I'm gonna restate, I'm always restating my darks. Anybody else always take, put their darks in and take their darks out? I'm always losing my darks, okay? But I know it, I see it, it's a habit, okay? Put it in, take it out, put it in, and work towards getting a few more values into your rows. See, I'm getting some modeling of some darks and my lights, okay? And then I'm gonna come in and go back to the lights. Warm, medium white, with more of my white, titanium white. So I'm trying to get just a, a light butter right there. And I'm gonna strike in, strike in, and start working on maybe the shape of some of the petals as it starts to get a little more sticky. I can do that. I can drop down my values. And I need to make sure if I'm working very on the warm side, keep it kind of warm. So this is like if you were painting red or pink, 
and you're coming in and you're trying to create some of your petals there, they won't all be white. So if you're having problems and you're tending to go too white and none of the values like between, you know, you're running the, the scale and you're putting in like burgundies and then all of a sudden you're all white and your whole rose is turning white, this will really help you. Okay, really help you just to break it down into a um, into a monochromatic monochromatic. It will really because you have to have you can't just paint it all in those lights. Okay, you have to have the darks and you have to have the lights. And if you get too much white on it, light lighter gray, you start losing the shape of your rose. Okay. Start losing the shape of your rose. I'm gonna come in and put the indication of the petals, my reaching petals in. And we'll push so they have not just solid lights. It's starting to come in kind of pretty. If you have a habit like I do of having this little bow tie right in the center, front and center every time, uh, it's a habit this week, then be aware of it, okay? Be aware of it. And I'm just working back and forth between my warms and my cools. Trying to keep my warms over to this side of my rose where I put in that warm gray. If you start losing, don't forget to restate. And my paint is very wet. It's kind of funny to me. I'm always intrigued by how with Heritage we're able to keep these acrylics. They stay wet so long, which is nice. It's very nice now. Let me come in and just go a little lighter. I might need to rinse my brush out. If you're if you're not getting as light and it's not showing, A, you're losing your darks again, D. Okay. Restate your darks as often as you have to. Alrighty, I'm gonna start moving into kind of cooling that gray down a little bit. Come somewhere in between the two. And then I can start working underneath. I really want to soften this look a little bit and I'll do this often. I'll come in and just start, okay, because I came in under and put a lot of contrast. So I probably should have come in just with a, I think it looks more attractive for my eye if I kind of have like a medium value, okay? The best background is a medium value. So I'll come in and uh, just pull some color off my value scale very casual in and around my flower. Much easier if you're working with a um, composition, okay, because you can work back and forth, obviously. And you can come in maybe and keep one side just a little bit, give it some warmth. And that's starting to look kind of nice and that's letting that flower tack up just a little bit. You can see, can you see how creamy Look how creamy that color is staying, alrighty. I'm gonna come in, I can go ahead and maybe soften these, these young petals down here in the center. I work back and forth. And you gotta watch your warms and cools now when you start working in because all of a sudden, your eye, the camera may not be picking it up, but your eye will definitely look at it and go, I don't know what's wrong. If that's the case, it's probably a temperature. Alrighty. And I'm just softening out my edges. I love to do the lost and found edges. And we're about done with that. I definitely made a career out of it. <laughs> you don't have to make a career out of it. I'm gonna pull, that wasn't quite enough contrast, so I didn't continue. Let's get that just a little bit darker 
and warm it. And we could add a second row of petals, but I'm just doing a quick demonstration for you. So I'm going to come in. Rinse that out again. Come in with some lights. As it starts tacking up, it helps, okay? If you're fighting it, grab your coffee, have a little sip. Uh, I'm trying to paint quick for you. Keep the video nice and short. <laughs> And then texture comes into play when you're trying to get things to set off, especially when you're doing the monochromatics. So you want to use all the tools in your toolbox to give it depth. Ready? All the tools you have to give it depth. And I have a big old chunky goober right there. There we go. All right, so there you have it. It took a little longer than I anticipated, but just because I'm fighting with the paint, I need it to dry up. So I would recommend, um, let's look at this real quick. I, to, I would like to come back as this tacks up and I may, um, sometimes I'll leave things and then the next morning I'll come in and I'll go, oh, I can, now it's just dry. I can probably come back in with my whites and just kiss the top of that, alrighty? But that just gives you a quick idea of, uh, you know, coming in and doing a quick rose, okay? To me, it's much easier if you're painting more than one at a time. And we can come in and add some leaves, the impression of leaves if you'd like. Uh, so if you're working on one and you want, you know, you'd come down, come down and just do some grays first. Watch your warms and cools. Don't get, I don't jump into a ton of the contrast right away. And then you can come in with your highlight. Um, I don't definitely don't want them to be the stars of the show. So you can come in with a lighter gray. If it's not showing up, lighten it just a little bit, jump up the value scale. So that was using a number eight, so I may want to go to a nine. That just gave me a little pretty composition and I can, I'll get a little crazy with my brush and everyone asks, well, how do you get so casual? I just really, it's an intuition. Um, it's a gut instinct that, you know, I want to add a little bit of shadow there because I need that rose to pop. Of course, you know, we add shadows when we have the greens, so I need that rose to pop. So you can come in and negative paint just like you would, um, if you were using hues, okay? If you have a harsh line and your eye is going to it, same idea, it's just that you're using your grays, okay? All right, so that gives us my darkest dark. You gotta watch this contrast, but I think just from, um, I think it looks kind of pretty. I could stand to come in, you know, uh, and maybe, Put just a little hint of darks back from my bowl to make sure we all know where the bowl is, but I also don't want to take away from the other contrast. That's pretty. All right, so there you have it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. And um, you can come back into something. Just remember that, okay? Anytime you're painting, um, even if you're doing a la prima one time through, 
acrylics die down and you know they dry down a value or two and the next day you go back and you look at them and you're like oh I thought I had that you know I needed really all the way up to a value eight in that highlight or I need a bridge don't be afraid to go back into it it's okay all right we all do it um it's just that little kiss that makes the difference you know it's just that little something okay well hopefully you enjoyed that now if you want to um come back and get you know get yourself a couple little of uh, canvases, I would work on more than one at a time, okay? Because I was fighting with this and you got to watch me fight with it a little bit, but it's because it's so wet, okay? it's There's that perfect tack up when you're painting a flower um, in a landscape, anything you're painting with the acrylics because these are pure pigment and they stay open. And, um, you know, it depends on your environment, your air conditioning. If you're in the desert Southwest, it's probably a lot drier than where I'm at. I'm in the South in Alabama. So everything's been very, very moist. Um, I have been running the air conditioning. I've had these paints out for several hours ready to film and, um, they still didn't really thicken up enough. Okay. So I like my paints. You'll get to know the paints. You'll get to know the feel. Every pigment is a little different. Your earth colors maybe stiffen up a little quicker. Um, I like my white to be like toothpaste and you'll figure out what works for you. All right. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. And now let's, um, get ready to paint a composition on the next one. Go through a couple of these roses, you know, um, on practice boards. You can put them on small canvases. They make great gifts, okay? And um, anyway, and then we will get back together on the next one. See you then. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss out. Feel free to share with your friends and get them all to subscribe. Let's build up a little network of following. And um, don't forget over on Jansen Art Studio, my mentor and friend, and uh, Tom A, as well as Just Jansen, we're all building up our YouTube channel so that we can uh, share a lot of information and techniques with you, okay? Subscribe. See you next time.